And the four generalizations here describe how energy influences our ability to combine atomic orbitals to produce molecular orbitals by the LCAO method. Before I get to that, let me introduce the idea of a molecular orbital diagram. A molecular orbital diagram puts the atomic orbitals that are involved in bonding on an energy scale. Each of those lines, those horizontal lines, represents an atomic orbital energy. On the left side, the atomic orbital for atom one, maybe a 2s orbital, and on the right hand side, the atomic orbital energy for atom two. In the middle, we're going to draw new levels that, per, that are produced by the LCAO method, and those will be the molecular orbitals. The combination of, say, our 2s and our 2s can produce bonding and antibonding molecular orbital, and so we'll have energies that are stabilized in the case of bonding and destabilized in the case of antibonding. And we tend to draw dashed lines to show that these new molecular orbitals result from pairwise combinations of atomic orbitals. We call this energy the stabilization energy, that is the drop from the level of the atomic orbital down to the bonding orbital, that's the stabilizing energy. We call that the destabilization energy. In the example that I've shown, the two atomic orbitals started out at the same energy level and will determine the uh, stabilization and destabilization energy. This actually comes under generalization G1. So we've talked already uh, about how orbital overlap depends on this idea of whether there's allowed or disallowed combinations. The amount of overlap is going to depend on distance. So the farther apart atoms are, the less chance there is for orbital overlap. Different orbitals have different spatial extents. The p orbital, for example, has a shape that has along the cylindrical axis a much greater extent than in the side-on uh, interaction mode. And so let's return now to another factor that determines orbital overlap. Here was the matched case. And let's take a look at the case where the energies are not matched. In the mismatched case, those atomic orbitals are going to be different, and there's going to be less orbital overlap. So here, E1 minus E2 is now something different than zero. In the matched case, E1 minus E2 is zero because the two orbitals are exactly the same. But in this case, atomic orbital one has an energy that is higher than atomic orbital two. So the amount of overlap decreases in the mismatched case. Since over orbital overlap decreases, generalization G2 says the amount of stabilization and destabilization is less. So the new molecular orbitals that result from this mismatched case show a smaller amount of destabilization and a smaller amount of stabilization. There's less overlap when atomic orbital energies are mismatched. So notice we have, in the case that we worked first, the matched case, a lot of destabilization where we have a relatively small amount of destabilization, which destabilization here is defined from the highest atomic orbital energy up to the new molecular orbital energy. Stabilization is defined by the lowest atomic orbital energy and the new molecular orbital energies. So that distance there is the amount of stabilization 